What's going on YouTube? This is Eric Kelly, AKA The Tech Gentleman, bringing you guys my unboxing and first impressions of the LG V20. So without further ado, let's talk tech. So let's get into it guys. I'm excited. I'm excited about the LG V20. I feel like there are only about 12 of us who are, but I'm one of those 12. And I'm gonna tell you why. First off, this phone is the only phone out right now that is focused on giving you a specific experience. It's the only one where the company is not trying to make you feel like what they're giving you is the best. And then when you put it up against the other options, there's really not that much difference. So take the iPhone 7, Galaxy S7 Edge, and even the Pixel. Everybody's Pixel peeping these pictures and everything like that. And really, if you show the pictures to somebody, they really won't notice a difference. They might have a certain preference and all that stuff, but as far as the quality of the pictures and you know Google saying that their camera is the best ever and iPhone saying their camera is the best and all that, there's really no clear difference. This camera and, well, these the mics on here, really the audio on the LG V20 is noticeably different. It's noticeably better than everything else out there. What I plan on doing, plan on taking my Sennheisers, the HH, HD 558s, plug them into here. Just living the experience, man. The audiophile, high quality experience. So let's go ahead and take a look around the box. I'm gonna make this quick because there are about a thousand of these out there. V20 on the front, Verizon LTE Advanced on the side because this is the Verizon variant. Uh, LG V20 on the back packaging. You got your uh, package contents as well. Pre-installed SIM card, standard lithium ion battery, wall USB charger, quick reference guide, and product safety and warranty brochure. Got some other stamps down here, Qualcomm Snapdragon, of course. Go ahead, take this off. So this is LG's kind of slogan right now. Life's good when you play more. So if you remember the LG uh, G5, they had the friends and they were telling you, hey, you should go play and all that stuff. Well, this phone isn't for play. It's for getting things done. And that's what I like. So you open a box up, opens up. Sort of like in a, a book style format. Got your LG V20 brand in there. Got the big phone here on the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and sit it to the side right quick while we finish going through this box. So of course in the back you got your books, which we will probably uh, never read. On the right side over here, opens up again. And we've got our travel adapter here. Open this up, and this is USB uh, Quick Charge 3.0, so this should be the fastest charging standard available. So you see travel adapter. We've got 9 volts at 1.8 amps, and, or uh, 5 volts at 1.8. So the 9 volts is the 3.0 standard, and the 5 volt 1.8 amp is, I guess, the default. If you plug something in, it's not Quick Charge 3.0 compliant it'll default to the five volts at 1.8 amps. Fast charge, I like it. LG brand on the front, cool. And this is my first USB Type-C device, even though I've been getting sent all kinds of USB Type-C stuff to review. Um, I'll finally be able to do that if I can get this cable out. But uh, one of the benefits of USB Type-C is uh, quicker start, quicker charging, quicker data transfer because it supports um, higher voltage through the cable. So you can send more power through, charge things faster. Just got to make sure that you get something that is, uh, you know, a high quality uh, cable. So let's get this out the plastic here. So this is a flat cable. And then you can see on the ends here we got our USB to USB Type C. And USB type C can be inserted either way. So it doesn't care which direction it goes in. Little LG electronics badge there. It's cool. I like the flat cable. Um, just looks cool. Functionally, I don't think it'll make a difference for me, but whatever. 
and we've got our battery here. Go ahead and snatch this guy out. I'm gonna go ahead and lock focus, man. Trying something different as far as the lighting setup. Life's good when you play more branding. And so we got our 3200 milliamp hour battery. So this should be pretty decent uh, battery life on here. Let's go ahead and grab the phone. And we're gonna take a look around the phone right quick. So on the back, we got our Verizon tramp stamp. Of course, we got our fingerprint sensor. And we've got our dual cameras. We have a uh, 16 megapixel main camera and an eight megapixel uh, wide angle camera. We've got our dual tone LED. Also have our focusing sensors there, uh, the laser and um, laser and phase detect autofocus on this guy. So focusing in good light should be easy. Also got our V20 branding on the back. On the left side, we've got that little button. I'm going to go ahead and pop that off. So this button actually pops off the back cover, which is made of all metal. No plastic or anything like that, which I like. And it also goes into the uh, goes into the durability of the phone as well. And so on the back cover here, we've got our NFC contacts here and the NFC actually runs around the rim of the camera. So if you are trying to do an Android Pay transaction or use NFC, uh, you'll actually get better results if you kind of just put your camera over the sensor, whatever the sensor is. All right, so we're gonna serve this guy back on. And one thing I like, the phone doesn't feel totally fragile when you take the back off. It still feels kind of substantial, unlike the uh, the G5 from earlier this year. All right, so I'm gonna pull this back and make sure I got this on good. All right, it is on good. And just having the battery in, getting a little bit of weight and then the fill in the hand, it feels really thin. Um, feels lighter than it should. I like this look because it looks like a, it looks like a piece of you know, equipment. It looks like a tool. Like you're about to do some stuff, get some things done. I like that. All right. So this. So on the left side, we've got our volume up and down rocker. It's pretty clicky. Up top, we've got the return of the uh, <laughs> the uh, IRA blaster. I had a brain freeze there. And we've got a mic up top. The well, iron blaster is here and the mic is up top. And this phone actually has three microphones on it. So we have the one up top, one on the bottom, and see if I can see where the third mic is. Can't see what the third mic is, but that is a part of LG's solution for excellent uh, audio recording. It's supposed to be able to do like hi-fi audio recording and also have pretty good noise canceling as well. Uh, on the bottom, we have our speaker, single fire speaker, gets pretty loud, our USB type C port, and our headphone jack. And now this headphone jack is another key feature of the LG V20, it's supposed to be the best available right now. And I play with this a little bit in AT&T because Verizon, in two cities, didn't know what this phone was. Like I went into Verizon in Huntsville, yeah, I'm going to call them out, I went to Verizon in Huntsville, I said, hey, do you have an LG V20 on display? This is once it went up for pre-order. The guy said, the LG V what? And I went to another person and asked them. They said the same thing. The V, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Went to Birmingham, Alabama, called before I went. Said, hey, do you have a V20 on display? He said, yeah, we do. Went up there, showed me the V10. Just terrible, man. So I ended up going to the AT&T store and they had it on display. And I'm gonna pull these stickers off right quick so I can get that out the way. So there is a little sticker on the fingerprint sensor and the fingerprint sensor does double as the power button as well. So um, if you're curious about where the power button is, it is the fingerprint sensor. Hear that little click. All right. And there's some more plastic on the side here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. 
And we've got some more plastic on the side. All right, and get this screen protector off the front. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna leave it on. Leave that on, hopefully that doesn't annoy me too much. And we're going to go ahead and power this guy on. So immediately I know this lighting situation isn't gonna work out that well. S7 Edge is just going crazy. And that's one of the things that I'm excited about on this phone, uh, the manual video controls. So I use cell phones to shoot all my videos and immediately lighting is always an issue. Um, you have, you're very limited on uh, the type of lighting you can be in and get, you know, good color reproduction and good sharpness and make it easy for the phone to focus. And usually that's in my dining room underneath like some daylight bulbs to give me pretty neutral light. Um, but the reason why I like this phone is because under video you have manual controls and I can actually lock the exposure. So if you see how if you kind of look back here at the table, how it's getting darker and lighter depending on what I'm showing you. As the phone focuses on bright things, it gets dark in the background to try to compensate for the light. And then when I show you darker things, it brightens everything up. So it's just kind of jumping around all crazy. But if I was shooting with the V20, I could actually lock the exposure in video. And that way it would look more, uh, it would be a more high quality video. You wouldn't get all this bouncing. So, all right. Got the setup here. Kind of go through. And I'm going to go through and get this guy set up and I'll be right back. All right, YouTube, we're back. I've taken some time to get all my info loaded on the LG V20. Uh, I've done some, of course, some audio tests with my Sennheisers. Um, I've done some audio tests just with the speakers on the phone. Um, I've also done some audio tests as far as recording. And um, I'm hyped, man. I'm excited. It just sounds better. Um, and if you're asking why I have the Note 5 here, um, out of the last batch of Samsung devices, which is all that I have right now, out of the S6, S6 Edge, that generation of devices, and also out of the S7 and S7 Edge, the Samsung phone that has the best audio is the Note 5, but it still pales in comparison to the V20. So that's why I wanted to use it as the device that I kind of uh, set my benchmark against. Um, I know that the S audio on the S7 out of the built-in speaker and out of the headphone jack is just lower in volume. And the V20 is louder than both of them, but it's not just about volume. It's also about just like depth and richness and clarity. A bunch of intangible words, but it just sounds better. It's almost as if, you know, if sound was something you could... You know, be dipped in. You're a lot. You go a lot deeper with the V20. I don't know if that analogy makes any sense, but that's just how it feels. You get more immersed with the V20. So, like I said, got all my info loaded up. I'm gonna give you guys kind of my first impressions. I'm leaving this little. It's not actually a screen protector. It's just the out of the box, um, just screen covering. I'm leaving that on for right now because this screen is just so big. I know I end up scratching it or something like that. So I'll probably get a tempered that I'll throw on there. And I'll try my best to keep this plastic guy on here, but it feels terrible. Um, I miss the feel of real glass. Uh, so just kind of walk you guys through my first impressions. The phone is fast, it's smooth, very fluid. I love it. Um, I thought that it would be a big shock going from the colors on the, you know, on the AMOLED device to the LCD. Uh, the IPS quantum dot on the uh, the V20, but it actually isn't that bad, especially when you don't have, you know, especially when you aren't holding it side by side with the AMOLED screen. If you're just looking at it, the colors are very pleasing. Um, some might say they're oversaturated, and I have to say uh, to those people, you're right. 
it def they definitely are uh, heavily saturated. Um, I can definitely see that being the case. But um, if you're coming from a Samsung device, you're worried about the screen on the V20, uh, don't. They're doing a pretty good job. The blacks are very inky. Um, let's see, I'm going to go to the settings just so you can see just the black at the bottom down there. Um, you can't really tell where the screen ends and where the little LG bezel down here begins, which is pretty good. Great blacks on here. So that is a plus. That is a big win for LG. Because um, the screen tech is definitely something that they have to compete with. When you're going up against the Samsung devices and now the Pixel with the AMOLED and stuff like that. So the screen and the display are definitely a go. Uh, talked about the audio already. The audio is great. Uh, as far as the cameras go, the cameras are pretty good as well. Um, I'm really just excited about the... Uh, just the manual modes, man. Especially in the video. Um, I shoot a lot of... Uh, you know, I shoot all my videos with my um, with my cell phones. So having a phone where I can actually just really dial in and get into the nitty gritty as far as the different video options down here. We got white balance, uh, focus. Uh, you got your ISO, shutter speed, um, and you can also do your exposure lock and stuff like that. You got your audio left and right channel indicators over here, and your frame rate and your bit rate as well. You can actually crank that bit rate up higher and do a uh, hi-fi and it just says let me uh, crank this down it says uh, when you have when you play or share videos with hi-fi audio the hi-fi audio will only work in apps that support hi-fi which makes sense and so now when we go back and actually we'll go to bump it all the way up to the top here which is UHD or 4k you can see we're doing 48 megabits per second. And we take this bit rate up to high. See, we're doing 64 megabits per, hit per second 4K. So that's going to be probably the highest quality video you can get out of a mobile device today. Um, and you got the same kind of setup for your, your pictures. And if you'll notice, I'm actually using the uh, second display over here, which is kind of handy, you know. This is just the, uh, this area right here is just a normal display. And then you have these extra controls that come up in the second display. And it just kind of makes use of that space. And it just feels, feels nice. And so you can see you got a histogram down here. You got all the same controls you have in the video. And it's just, it's just nice, man. So I look forward to creating some crazy stuff. And we'll take a look at the wide angle camera here. So that's just cool. Snap that. <laughs> yeah man the camera is going to be a lot of fun um, also I'm sure you guys have noticed that I have an app drawer and so what I've done is what most of you probably will want to do which is just go and grab uh, a launcher whatever your favorite launcher is just go ahead and install it um, I actually synced my apps and everything from my note 5 so it pulled that launcher on over as soon as it was installed when you hit the home button it uh, will ask you which one you want to make your default and I just chose Google now and I never have to worry about it and I have my app drawer and another thing that I did kind of dig into the settings there's so many settings and customizations you can make to this phone it's a uh, it's kind of crazy but uh, once you go down to you know you got your display settings and the number one thing I recommend you do when you get this phone is go to display size and crank this thing all the way down because it comes and you got these huge icons and you only get uh, a grid of four of them. Like if I go home now, you'll see I just got the four uh, folders there. But if I go back, yeah, so definitely um, make sure you crank this down. And what that allows you to do is to take better advantage of that screen size. So now when I go home, I have five places that I can... Um, you know, five across as far as what all I can put on my home screen and you'll just get more information on uh, the screen whenever you're looking at it so if you're looking at a web page you'll get more info on the web page uh, whatever you're reading whatever picture you're looking at you'll see more of it which is something I definitely recommend that you do so going back to the settings 
Um, like I said, that's the main thing, the, the first thing really that I did. And uh, taking care of that display size. Um, also, um, the knock on feature. If you're familiar with LG, they actually have a feature where you can turn the screen on and off by double tapping. It comes in handy a lot with the power button being um, merged with the fingerprint scanner on the back back here. So if you're laying the screen, if you have your phone flat and you want to uh, turn it on and turn it off, if you have the LG default screen, I mean the default uh, launcher for LG, you can actually just double tap anywhere in the blank space. But since I'm using a third party launcher, I'm kind of forced to just double tap on the notification shade. You know, to cut the phone off, and I can double tap to cut it on. So that's going to be a a very convenient feature with you having a power button on the back so you're not you know having to pick it up and all that stuff all the time I think that's pretty cool and and a good um, a combination that LD, LG has made knowing that they have their power button on the back and so I'm not gonna make this a you know try to make this a full review but this is my first impressions I love it um, my wife saw it she said it looks like a man phone and it does. It looks like a grown man phone, but also it looks like a a piece of uh, you know equipment. You know, it looks like something like a tool or something you're about to go do some work with. And uh, you know, ironically, LG's logo is a uh, you know something about playing, but this phone looks like it's not playing at all. It looks very serious, you know. And I like that about it. it feels substantial in the hand, not too heavy. Uh, definitely um, thin and light which is something I like. And we'll see if this right here is going to replace my, my main device. So far, I'm loving it, guys. And uh, if you guys got any questions about the LG V20, definitely hit me up, like, comment, subscribe. Um, my wife is kind of jealous right now because she wanted the Note 7, but I kind of told her you got to pick a phone that doesn't explode, so she's trying to scope out what her next device is going to be. Um, but, yeah, hit me up if you got any questions about the V20. I'll definitely try to make sure I can answer them. And um, I guess until next time, guys, it's been the Tech Gentleman. Peace.